Morgan? Yes? I read a review you did on the website not too long ago. Yes, I'm very aware of this review if I think I know what you're talking about. It wasn't, wasn't too good. Like, it wasn't a very positive review. Even for me. Yeah. That bad. I, I really want to hear more. <laughs> I asked for it. Here we go. Alright guys, I'm Morgan Stradley. And I'm Chelsea Robson. And we are doing something a little different than our normal art book review or movie review. Um, I was not going to do a video review of this particular film. However, I did do a written review because I did go see a press screening of it ahead of time. Uh, no guests were allowed, which is again a, a signal that this probably isn't the best film. And then there was a very, very, very strict embargo on when we could even talk about it. Again, it's like they just didn't want anything any word to get out about this film is almost as if Lionsgate just said just just release it and like just let's just try to get some <laughs> money back for it and just pretend it didn't exist it <laughs> I don't know but in case you don't know what we're talking about we're talking about Norm of the North yeah some people in the comments of my review which I'll link down below they were saying you got to do a video review I can't wait to hear your your comments and your <laughs> thoughts of like you just read them <laughs> what do you want what? what why are you torturing me <laughs> and like I feel bad because and Chelsea has not seen the movie I have not seen the movie so she, she barred me from seeing this movie I don't apparently waste. I'm not even an animation <laughs> addict should not see this movie and I feel really bad saying that but again you guys asked for it so I'm just gonna be honest because I'm honest yes so I basically transparent. am parent I'm blunt no transparent mm -hmm. yes <laughs> and so I'm just gonna be talking to Chelsea about the movie and kind of reviewing it for you guys but also kind of getting her reactions to different things in the film okay so Norm of the North tells the story of a polar bear who lives in the Arctic. And it, within the very first, first few minutes, we are introduced to the fact that he has this magical ability to talk to humans, which is like so pathetic that they even had to like write it that way. Cause it's like, okay, eventually he's going to go to New York city and interact with humans and we need him to be able to talk. So let's just straight out tell you <laughs> that he can talk to humans because it's not like in any other animated film where animals can talk to humans. Like, people just accept it, right? right? right, right. But the fact that they had to tell us... So like, he's the only one that can talk to yes, humans? Yes, he has a okay. special... Well, there's another one. His grandfather oh. also could have... Okay. And was shunned, you know, in a way because he had this ability to talk to humans. And I just thought it was a very pathetic plot device that they, like, said, all right, I have this magical ability to talk to humans. <laughs> like, I could just think, like, cue five minutes from now, enter human. Yeah, Stage right. left, right? Like... <laughs> And that kind of happens. So <laughs> anyways, he lives in the Arctic and all, it's being bombarded by tourists. It's the new hot destination. And all of his other Arctic friends basically say, yeah. And I'm going to be spoiling the movie for you guys just right now. I'll be honest. But, so basically all these other Arctic critters are like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. And so they start putting on like shows for the tourists and dance parties. And this is where oh, no. we're introduced to Norm's other special ability, which is dancing, particularly twerking. What? Yes, twerking is a thing, and they actually say the word twerking in this film, and I'm like... This is PG, or what is yeah, this? Yes, yes, it is, and I'm like, know. okay, have you actually Google searched twerking? Don't. Don't do it. NSFW, and like, I'm sure kids are gonna be like, what's twerking, Mom? Like, and he does twerk. Booty in the camera twerking. It oh is, my gosh. like, already, there are all these strikes against this film. Within this the first... How many minutes? Probably 10, 15. Like, at this point in the film, I'm sitting in the theater and going, what time? <laughs> oh, crap. It's only been 15 minutes. No. I was really hoping in my head that, like, maybe 45 minutes had passed and we're halfway <laughs> done. No. No. There's also, oh, it's just so bad. There's just, like, there's these two, like, all, mm, guys, can't even talk. It. So then the main plot is where there's this, you know, land developer who's basically going to make mini mansions in the Arctic for rich, uh, the one percenters, as they say. And I'm like, really? The one percenters? Like, they're trying to be funny. And I'm like, no. Why are we going political? I don't know. Uh, because like, why not? I guess. There's this like the 90s style political. This is totally 90s in the conservationalist message oh that it, it has to hit. Right. This movie is Totally 90s in the conservationalist message and how over the top it is. I'm like, whoa, is Captain Planet going to appear? <laughs> um, so anyways, they are 
they are going to be building these mini mansions and just basically taking over the Arctic. Because is... the 1% is definitely going to be moving to the Arctic. Oh, no, they say of that. all places. They're saying, like, forget the Bahamas. This is the new place. They all want to come here. It's awesome. And so they are shooting a commercial here, and they have this guy dressed in a bear suit dancing, and then Norm gets, like, really mad and destroys everything. And then the lady is like, oh, no, we lost our art director. And it's like this whole time, it's just so bad because they're trying to be funny. And so they have this like art director who's your typical artiste who's like, my vision. And oh. I oh, I hate that I am making commercials when I could be, you know, making my art. But it's good enough. I'll be using this for my art. And oh, like the, the drama art director, artsy guy is there and. And so he quits. I quit. I quit. I can't believe there's all these animals here. And they Like, oh my gosh, oh, what are we going to do? Bring the Arctic to me. I, I can't even, I don't even know what? the quotes. But so she's like making this kind of grassroots video of saying so like, kind of look like how cool the Arctic Blair, is. Blair Witch. Blair Witch. Like the Arctic is so cool. Polar bears can chase you. And so she, then she goes home and um, shows her boss this, which is like, he is your typical hippie, um, basically ty tycoon. Okay. You know, business tycoon, big, big money, you know, CEO, whatnot, right. and just like, I don't care, let's just make more money, more homes. Green is his last name, which is like green for dollar signs. And he sh she shows him this, and he's like, oh, that's awesome, let's do it. Uh, let's do more over there. So long story short, they take one of the homes and like fly it home and put it on like a barge, and Norb sneaks in with three of these things called lemmings, which is a very, very, very blatant attempt to knock off Oh, you're already yawning. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, get ready, guys. I'm like, <laughs> I already don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I'll just stop right now. Forget my review. We're done. <laughs> We're done. <gasps> Anyways, so these oh, lemmings yeah. are basically a blatant knockoff of Minions or Penguins of Madagascar. And they even say that the, the girl sees the lemmings when eventually she meets up with Norm later in New York City. is like, wow, they're so marketable. Yeah, Boy, it's hey. like they, they, you can just imagine the, you know, studio executives who are like crossing their fingers being like, yes, please be the next Minions, please. Because Minions, you know. Minions are a big deal. They are a big deal. These are not Lemmings a big deal. Lemmings are not those. They're like indestructible. So you like smush them and they become a pancake and then they sit there for a few seconds and they go, boo, and they pop back up and they love Fart jokes and pee jokes up the wazoo. So there's there is minions. But yes, they're but not minions. Like they go to this like you know glitzy business office in New York City, and there there's a aquarium, and they just start peeing in the aquarium. And Norm's like, "Way to go, guys!" Greenlit this. Oh, that's my thing. This whole time while I'm watching this movie, I'm like so embarrassed because I'm like, okay. How did this get greenlit? Like, I know there's studio checkpoints, like, during the initial, like, the pitch mm -hmm. process and then right. story process. And then we're, like, finding, finalizing the script and then we're going into production. I'm like, how many checkpoints did this pass? And people still thought, like, yes, this is a great idea. This is a great idea. Did they show it to the and, like, kids? Like, I, why didn't people... I, I have a feeling they did not do any test screenings for this movie. Because I don't even know how you could, like, and then actually feel okay getting... Like, releasing yeah. this. And yes, it did have a small budget, but small budget does not mean crap. No, it does not. Like, small budget gives you opportunity to just try things that maybe, you know, because you know there isn't at much, that much at stake. Right. Right? Like, you can be a little bit more experimental with your subject matter, but, like, not this. So, I don't even know. This is just trying to get, like, every trope this in has, there. Yes, it has every single animation trope that you, and, and movie trope that you could ever want. So, there's the dance party at the end. Oh. There is the love interest who has, like, the big eyes who bats. But we see her at the very beginning, and then we don't, like, we see her, like, staring at Norm, but no real interaction. And then you're, it's very clearly, like, oh, she's a girl. He's a guy. They're going to get together <laughs> at some point. They're the and, only polar bears here. And at the end, they're together. And <laughs> there's the, you know... The business tycoon who, you know, wants to destroy the environment. There's the overly 90s, you know, conservation message. Um, mm. What else is there? Uh, 
I just get, I get angry about things like this because you look at so many great filmmakers who can't get any type of a budget. And yes. this was put out in theaters. So yeah. Lightningsgate I mean, said, yes, this is something that's worth putting in theaters. I don't, yeah, as if they needed, maybe they needed to make some money back on something else. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I this. if this would have been released direct to DVD or home video... I wouldn't complain because mm-hmm. one, I probably wouldn't see it. Right. And two, it's like that whole market has a very much yeah. tarnished image yeah. in what goes there that I'd be like, mm, it's just like everything else. But once you kind of hit this theatrical film status, you're like, you're better than this. See, I have a lot of hope for any movie that goes into the theaters. Mm-hmm. As you should. And so that just makes me really sad. Really, really sad. But yeah. Yeah, anyway. I was going to go into more of the plot, but, like, I'm just going to stop it right there. Like, if you would like to see this, please do, but, like, <laughs> I wouldn't even recommend to go see this to just see how bad it is. Because it's so bad, it's it's almost unfathomable how bad <laughs> this film is. Like, I wouldn't even have my worst enemy go and see this movie. Just, it's just not good, and it's embarrassing. At the end of the film, I was just like... You know, even ten minutes in the film, I'm like, "What am I seeing? What am I watching?" Well, yeah. Like, how did I? How did I see? Th- spend the last hour and a half watching this, and we are all now I'm just, dumber. I was for flabbergasted at, at <laughs> how, you know, in my mind, like, how did this get made? How did this get a distributor? And and the the cherry on top, I guess, is the fact that this has a zero percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes from critics. Zero percent. It wasn't four percent, and apparently that was one review, and that review was grossly misinterpreted. <laughs> and someone must have said, "Hey, like you, you do not read that review because it's clearly a dud." So zero percent, which uh. is so bad. And so you said you kind of had high hopes going into this film. I ha- actually hadn't seen many of these trailers at all. I, I well, well okay, hold on. I saw. I saw one trailer for it, and I really didn't have high hopes because mm-hmm. of the trailer. I had. It was one of those, just like, you look a little bit like a little bit of Madagascar, but mm-hmm. the, like the bad side of mm-hmm. Madagascar. And then a little bit of, you know, those like old Valiant, you know, Disney videos. It's yeah. like, really? Is this? What is this? Yeah. So I didn't actually have high hopes for that because of the trailer. It was just the sheer fact that you put something in theaters. In theaters. Yeah. I mean, and we have seen like f- things like Free Birds and there's been... A few duds yeah. over over time, and it's told. But this, I think, beats them all, or almost is a, a top three contender <laughs> for worst animated film of all time, theatric release, just because I'm like, wow. So here's why we're posting this. Because um, you guys asked for it. You <laughs> asked for it. You, you were like, hey, I want you to do this. Also, if you are an animator company, animation company, that you're putting, putting out a... A video, or you're wanting to do something, please run it by us first. <laughs> Just give us a little test screening because in the early stages, <laughs> very early stages, and we can help. I, I swear, anyone can help. It doesn't have to be us. <laughs> Just get it. That's what test screenings are for. Have somebody <laughs> test screen this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing, is I'm just kind of embarrassed for the people who were working on this, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of hard, you know, the director, and I know a lot of hard work went into it, yeah. and that's what makes me ultimately so sad for this, because, you know, I had some friends who won tickets, so they wouldn't let me bring a guest, but they were, like, giving away tickets to go see this, and they won, and they said, afterwards, I just apologized, I, I said, I am so sorry for, for that, that was honestly one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and she's like, oh, it's okay, like, we're totally, you know, when you have kids, and you see these kids' movies, you're totally used to it. I'm like, no! Uh. That, th- this is the problem. It, movies like Norm the North are what takes animation back, mm-hmm. because, you know, someone you know, makes that comment where they say, yeah, this is just what you expect. You expect, like, the worst movie you've ever seen. Like, you do? I, I, I don't. don't. at all. I think animation has taken a huge step over the past decade and, and even, you know, two or three decades. It's just from Little Mermaid on or even in the... There's... Trust me, there are lots of great... Ex- 40s. <laughs> like, come on. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I mean, even the 40s, some of the early stuff even that Walt Disney was doing theatrically are masterpieces and not just filled with tropes and just dumbing it down and just really insulting your intelligence. I mean, anyone with a, 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 an IQ of freezing temperatures or below might enjoy this film, but anyone above would not enjoy this. So 
Uh, I'm really sad that... that I can see you're real torn up about this. I am, because normally I'm very positive (laughs) about my... Like, even if it is a bad film, I still find positives to see, and, like, I still find some joy in seeing the film. But this, no joy. No joy writing the review for this, because, again, like, I had to write the review, and I had to be honest... And again, you guys made me do this video review with Chelsea, and no joy. It just this does not bring joy <laughs> no to my life. No joy. The whole purpose of life is to find joy and and things that add to your happiness. And <laughs> Warm of the North is not one of those. There you have it, folks. There you have it. Until next time, my name is Chelsea, and I'm Morgan, and you're watching the Rotoscopers YouTube. Uh, oh, 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 hi, diddly dee, a back design for me. you wish upon a star. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone should put him out of his misery. <laughs> <laughs>